Can they be shot in the neck and dragged out and punched in the face and left to bleed on the ground? Is that in the police guidelines? No! Now can anyone who has seen the story unfold in King's Cross today not be angry, not be outraged? Can anyone dismiss it? No. Shit no. happens. No. Bad shit no. happens. That's what I read in the Daily Telegraph today. If you are in a stolen car, bad shit happens. If you are an Aboriginal youth, you have 20, 20 times more the chance of being locked up in jail, bad shit happens. A lot of bad shit happens to some people, doesn't it? We want justice. We're not happy with this state of affairs. And if the society cannot give an independent in inquiry into such an outrageous incident, Something is badly wrong. Yeah. Something is yeah. deeply yeah. wrong in this society. Yeah. We need justice. Yeah. We want an independent inquiry. Yeah. And we want, we the, want the police not to judge themselves. Yeah. We want the police not to have the right to carry the guns and use them at their own will. That's right. Other countries do not arm their police this way. They don't carry guns around. They don't carry tasers around. They have a special arm response group which can be called out when the situation is appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why do we have to have people armed with guns to carry out actions like we saw on Sunday morning? Because they can't get rid of the blacks any other way. And what about the rest of the story? What about the over-representation in jails? What about the huge over-representation in the unemployment statistics? What about the shameful gap in health statistics yep. between black Australians and the rest. Yeah. Yep. They yeah. say they're closing the gap. But when? 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 When is the gap going to be closed? We won't win unless we fight. And that's the truth. That's right. We want justice and we want it now. Yep. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Now. now. Today I stand here in support of our families of those people that happened there on the weekend. Yeah. It is unspeakable, it's wrong, and as far as I'm concerned, that was bullshit. Yeah. 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 Where was the taser? No taser, straight out gunshot. Dragged him out like a rag doll, yeah. punched into him on the ground, exactly. yeah. which was wrong. Yeah. Where yeah. is the respect of the so-called police force None. when they're doing things like that? None. Not only there, but in prison too, all over the world. Yeah. We look at Rodney King, we look at John Pratt, yeah. and all the other black yeah. fellas who have died in custody. Yeah. And we today stand in support of these people that are, that are hurting today. Yeah. It's only a couple of days since it happened, but all my condolences and feelings go to the family yeah. around today. And may they find peace in, in anything that happened. But at the same time, I'm, I'm very, very angry at the fact that watching the footage last night, seeing the police officer drag that young boy out after being shot in the neck, dragged him out like a rag doll yeah. and punched the piss out of him on the ground. Yep. Not right, not on, not in 2012. What's happening today? Nothing. Nothing. It is time to stand up, all you young fellas, time to stand up yep. and be counted. Yep. Don't let this happen to you anymore. Yep. It is not right. right. Thank you. I feel really honoured to be here today because I look around and I see all these Aboriginal people that have fought all their lives, who've had to fight just to stay alive. And we see what the cops are trying to do all the time is to take away even that most basic right, the right to be yeah. bloody alive. Yeah. Exactly. And so I say, I, th I think here we're in the company of people like Michael Anderson. It's a real honour to be anywhere near Michael Anderson for his long history of standing up for Aboriginal rights, for standing up against the cops, for standing up for everything that Aboriginal people have to fight for from the moment that they're born. And let's face it, our government doesn't give a shit. Our government doesn't care about Aboriginal people's lives. And let's face it, what they do to Aboriginal people is kind of what they'd like to do to the rest of us. So we've got a responsibility. Every one of us is not Aboriginal. We've got a responsibility to turn up here. We've got a responsibility to say that I'm on the side of Aboriginal people and fuck the police. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way, the only attitude that we can have. I don't care about what the police say. They're liars. 
They're there to basically make sure that our society keeps running for the rich and powerful. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Yeah. And they take it out on anyone they can. They're not there to solve crimes. They are the criminals. Yeah. So I think yeah. the rich should be yeah. 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 A campaign that needs to go on. Yeah. I've known some of the people here since the 80s when we were involved in the campaign uh, against black deaths in custody. And tragically, the rate of black deaths in custody has gone up since then. So much for the Royal Commission, it did nothing. Yeah. So we've got to keep making a fuss, we've got to keep getting out, making a noise and saying that while the cops keep murdering Aboriginal people, then all of us are going to stand up against the cops. Yeah. Uh, all of us that are here today are here for the, all for the same reason, just to uh, voice our disgust at the police and the manner in which a young man who already had two bullets in his body offered no resistance to the police was actually prone and couldn't resist anyway because of the bullet in his body, was beaten, viciously assaulted by two police officers. I saw uh, a policeman with the knee in that boy's back. I'm sure those actions of the police have actually exacerbated those injuries of those young men. The police have yet to be charged with any assault in relation to how they arrested those boys. There's been a Royal Commission with recommendations in place in this country for over 20 years. Every time police arrest Aboriginal people in this country, those recommendations are ignored. Yep. The police can't even follow their own rules. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We need a system where impartial people look at the actions of the police, not the police investigating themselves all the time, because all we ever get is a white wash. Then justifying murder and assault yep. and death of our yep. people by arm. I didn't mean to fall on him, as Mr Chris Hurley said in, in uh, Palm Island. I didn't mean to hit him so hard. Oh. Uh, he, did, he matched the description of Stephen Crowder when uh, David Gundy was killed. There's a young man from Woolloomooloo uh, who was killed over in Glebe in the same circumstances. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, Edison, Mar Edison, young Edison from down at Woolloomooloo. Chased in a stolen car, yep. opened the door, he was going to undo his seat belt and the police officer shot he had a gun, so he shot him dead. Yeah. These police keep getting away with murder of Aboriginal people. No! Yeah. The laws of this country allow them to continue to murder our people yeah. with immunity, with impunity, yeah. and it keeps getting swept under the carpet until yeah. they do damage to another young Aboriginal boy or girl. Yeah. We have young girls in our community who are constantly propositioned by these evil, ugly men in their blue uniform. Such a funny thing as they! Girls, young women as young as 14, and they think they can be moral arbiters for the rest of us? No way! Go home! We don't need you. Your services are no longer required. Let's talk about our law in our country. Yeah. Let's talk about respect yeah. for individual human beings. That's right. Let's talk about these families being compensated for the vicious assaults taken out by the police upon these boys. Let's them. talk about justice. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about sovereignty of Aboriginal people. Let's yeah. talk about our babies growing up to be old men and old women instead of dying before they're supposed to. Yeah. Let's talk about a system where we're all fair and treated equally. Yeah. Yeah. We have got it and we won't get it with these bastards. No. Let's dem they demand that we respect our, their law. I demand that they respect our law. Yeah. Yeah. Too many cops, not Too enough justice. Too many, many cops. No enough justice, too many cops! No enough justice, too many cops! No enough justice, too many cops! No enough justice! Too many cops! I wasn't surprised! I wasn't surprised that in King's Cross the cops shot two Aboriginal people. I was not surprised. I was outraged, but I was not surprised. Because in this country, one Aboriginal person is killed or dies of neglect or suicides in prison every month. Every single month. That it's not enough that the British came to this country, invaded and then conducted genocide on Aboriginal people, on the first Australians. Yep. Killing, Killing millions, possibly millions. 
of Aboriginal people. In 1788, there was a million Aboriginal people. In 1911, there was 31,000, as according to the only census to be conducted at that time. Shame, Australia, shame. 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 And they're continuing along on a genocidal policy. They locked them up in this policy they call protectionism. They locked up Aboriginal people, families, children, on missions. Palm Island being one of those missions. And then they decided on another genocidal policy called assimilation. And that's where they stole. They stole children. One in ten families, at least one in ten families, have stolen children. And now we exist in a country that kills their Aboriginal people once every month in custody. Shame, Australia, shame. 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 I've been involved in the fight for justice for Veronica Baxter, a transgender Aboriginal woman who was put in an all-male jail and who was not given her hormones as she should have been and who was found hung in her cell. I went to the colonial inquiry and I saw what a whitewash it was and I saw how much life is worth for the authorities that be of Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people lives are worth nothing in this racist country nothing. unless we forget those who have died before us and but those also, those leaders who have come and risen to the fore and shown us how to fight. Because I am inspired here today as other speakers have relayed the Aboriginal leadership and we will follow you and we will struggle alongside you and we will struggle for justice. Thanks very much. Amen. Always was. Now, I want to remind you something. Also, there is another death that the police is very afraid to investigate. It's a case of Roberto Laudicio Curti, the Brazilian guy. The was a, in Brazil, a lot of people went to the Australian embassy and the, and the uh, Australian consulate and put packets of biscuits at the door to tell him if he, one packet of biscuit is, is uh, uh, enough to kill a person. And that's what happened with Roberto. Yeah. I want to mention this because we heard, when that happened, that Roberto was aggressive. Roberto was attacking the police. That's why the police has to defend themselves. Mm. You've seen the footage. Yeah. Roberto running away from the police. Yeah. Running away in the police probably because he was captured in spray before. Was running. What is the aggression when someone is running from you? <laughs> and what they did? Three gangsters! Not one, not two, three. And he died. He died. He has to die. It's just this. TTJ has to die. This anyone has to die when the humanity. When is the humanity? It's not humanity. It has to hear in the radio the shock jokes. All the police. All the police. What about the death? Mm. No one shoot the police. Yeah. The police shoot people. Yeah. I want to make clear to you. That's why. Our struggle started a long time ago, but now it has to step up. Yeah. It's not enough to remember TJ only every 14th of February. Mm. We have to remember TJ every day and do something for TJ and for all the death in custody. We have to do something yeah. for these people. They have to put up with the violence, mm. for the police violence. We started this new thing in the 10th Embassy when we rebuilt the National Death in Custody campaign. We're going to do something. We are not going to let any death in custody without a response. This response yeah. is great, but we need bigger response. We need more people involved. We need more people 
bringing the message around the city what is happening. Many people they don't understand what's really happening in, 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 in with the police, with the jails, with even sick people in jails, they got no treatment and he died there. We have to do something and keep doing this. I'm really don't know how to tell you. The Indigenous Social Justice Association is meeting every, every third, uh, Thursday of the month in the Redfern Community Center, 7 o'clock. Everyone is invited. We go there to organize <laughs> our next action. Please come. Please be informed. Inform your friends. Inform your family. Inform your people who you work with. Remember, it's easy to say when what do we want justice. The, what is hard is to get it. And to get justice, we know it's our with, it's with our presence, it's our struggle, our fighting. It's great to see so many young people here. Ryan, myself, we're getting too old. We need you new young people to get involved. To keep this, that it has to be bigger, bigger and bigger because the life of one person, the life of one person is bigger than anything else. We have to respect human life as the first point. And this is a problem in this city, in this country, and in this state. They are not respecting the human life. And we have to impose the respect for human life. Come, come on. Hey, hey. Yes. Now, yes, right. Uh, well, firstly, I want to thank everybody who came here today. And I only wish that our rallies could always bring these numbers and more. Our numbers here today have showed the mob in Coward's Castle here that we are no longer going to accept their way of doing things. We are all human beings with human rights and our human rights must be respected by the police just as much as anybody else. We have that innate right that we are born with. Yes, we are today meeting on the stolen lands of the Gadigal people. And this place behind us, Genocide Castle, that has to be brought to its knees. It needs to understand the voice of the people. And we are the people. And we will continue to grow and we will continue to fight for what we know is our right. And our right is to survive. We don't want to be a death in custody. We don't want our children to be a death in custody. We want our children and our grandchildren to survive. And the police, it seems, need to be trained on how to do that. Is there anybody out there who would care to say a few words? Yes, come up here. On behalf of Middle Eastern activists, that they strongly support Aboriginal people in this country, that the country belongs to them. We strongly condemn the police brutality against the people of this country. And more than everything, we strongly condemn the police brutality against Aboriginal people. They have been massacred. This country, the history of this country is based on racism. It's based on the blood of innocent Aboriginal people who have been massacred and, and the country has been taken by the bloody British Empire. And still they are continuing to killing these innocent people. We strongly condemn this. The same as this bloody 
government is sending its troops to our country, to Middle Eastern country, to kill our people, and then they call us terrorists. This bloody government is a terrorist government. Yeah. Yeah. Don't give police power support for aboriginals. Can you please repeat this one? Don't give police power justice for aboriginals. Don't need police power, justice for Aboriginal people. Don't need police power, justice for Aboriginal people. As we know, the police number and uh, from 40 40,000 in 2004, it has increased to 50,000 in 2011 and New South Wales has the most amount of the police and this police is doing nothing than just killing innocent people instead of supporting us that we are fighting for justice for peace and for equality they are killing us they are targeting us because they are just brutal don't need police power. 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 Long life to Aboriginal people. Long live to Aboriginal people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Here and saying that most of the people here are right. black or dark. I'm white, and I'm surprised that there's no more white people here because police brutality is not only a uh, racist issue. If you're brutal, you're brutal. And as uh, someone said before, they first came for the Jews. I wasn't Jews, I didn't care. Then they came for homosexuals. I wasn't homosexual, so I didn't care. And so on. This will spread. And I would also like to share the experience I had. I'm not black, I'm quite white. Uh, but I had a police reach for a gun on me when I approached them to ask for direction as they broke the road. And let me tell you, I understand that in a situation like this, you just flee. Because that's what I did. I just turned the car around, pressed the accelerator as fast as I could. And one thing I knew, that was no uh, way I would stop if I was pursued. I was just thinking what I'm going to do. Luckily, they did not pursue me. Thank you. Here for a real good reason. Come on, all of you speak up. There's all that young mob here. You all know what's going on. What's going on in your lives, in, in our neighborhood, in our communities. You know what the police is doing to you. Step up and say something. You know, we're really sick of this. I don't want to have to let my nine-year-old out on the street anymore. I've got, you know, five sons. I don't want them fucking going down the street and being arrested just because he's in a pair of tracky pants and a hoodie. Come on! You know, we've got to be able to do something about this. What's being done? I mean, this, this poor kid, he's not even my son, but I feel for him. He's like my son. He's, he should be your son. He should be your, you know, from your home, from your belly, who you give birth to. He's there for you to protect, and we're here to protect each other. So come on, we've got to do something about this. Okay, thank you. I have Samoan, Aboriginal uh, and many other different workmates and I understand that what, what we're facing here. A young, a young Aboriginal man said to me before that he wasn't racist but that he believed that um, Troy was shot because he was black. And I, and I said, yeah, no, I understand, that's true. That is why he was shot. If he was white, he wouldn't be shot. We have to understand that. He was shot because he was a young Aboriginal kid. And as Malcolm X said, they turned the victims into the criminals. And we have to understand what we're facing here is not, not, not any different to what working people who are black, who are immigrant, who are coloured, are facing here in other parts of the country all around the world. Trayvon Martin was shot by a vigilante, a neighbourhood watch, a 16-year-old young black man in a hoodie was shot in a modern-day lynching in the United States and it took 
seven weeks of growing protests until there were tens of thousands of people in the street before they would even prosecute his killer. The cops were trying to defend the vigilante. And we know that the cops defend their own up and down the country. There's never been any justice for TJ. There's never been any justice for Murunji Dumaji and all the other long list of Aborigines who've died in custody. And now it's not just in custody, it's dying in the streets. And this, we should understand that this is just the beginning. What's happening, the, the, the attack, this is not just an attack on Aboriginal kids. This is an attack on the whole working class. We have to understand that what is coming. The capitalist system on a world scale is going into another period of depression and wars and fascism and the cutting edge of this is cop violence in the streets against coloured people in particular. Why is it that Aborigines in this country are just over 2.5% of the population and they're 25% of the prison population? Why is it that young Aboriginal men in particular are 60% of the juvenile prison population yeah. Yeah. for exactly the same reason that cops feel they can shoot them with impunity on the streets. We have to learn to fight. Fight together. Working class solidarity. The working class movement has to take this up. The working class movement, the union movement is getting weaker and it will get weaker and still it starts to fight for everyone. This is a working class issue and I say, and, and the Communist League will be campaigning around this, that this is the face of the dictatorship of capital in this country and around the world. Yeah. The police are the armed thugs in uniform that are the front lines of this dictatorship. Yeah. That is what we face and what we need to end it all are revolutions Millions of people, workers and farmers, like in the Russian Revolution and the Cuban Revolution. And we will do it, but we have to learn how to fight intelligently, not just lash out. That's what they want us to do. Malcolm X taught us this. You have to learn to be an intelligent fighter. You have to learn strategy and tactics. You have to fight to build a revolutionary organisation. But it can be done, and it will be done, on an international scale. And this is just the beginning. And the, the, the young Aboriginal and men and women who are here today will be in the front ranks of that fight, I strongly believe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.